Welcome back. This is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today, we're going to talk about toxic mold, signs and symptoms, as well as testing. So let's get right into it. Why would someone develop symptoms? Well, it's due to exposure, usually. Damp or water-damaged buildings, buildings that have recurrent roof leaks or floods are most problematic, poor ventilation, and then homes that have high humidity above 50%. You definitely want to keep that humidity below 50%. Okay? Signs and symptoms. You can develop new signs and symptoms, like new coughing or you know, uh, eye irritation. Or you may have a condition that gets much worse in a moldy environment. So let's get to depression. If someone is mildly depressed and they go into an environment that has a lot of mold, their depression can get significantly worse. Or they can just develop new signs and symptoms of de uh, depression. Okay? Migraines are the same thing. You might get one a year and then all of a sudden you go into this environment and you're getting migraines every other week. Muscle and joint pain, skin reactions, what we call urticaria, like itching, redness. Okay? It's very common. Coughing. For obvious reasons, it gets into your lungs, right? So you're trying to always cough it out. Eye irritations, chronic sinusitis. This one's a very important one because it's a telltale sign. If you have chronic recurrent sinusitis or sinus infections, and you take an antibiotic and it might clear it up, but two weeks later or a, week, a month later, it comes back. So if you have recurrent sinusitis or infections of the sinus, likely you have mold in the environment. It can create brain fog or neural inflammation due to the inflammatory process of mold. Fatigue or fibromyalgia is very common, as well as being a trigger for autoimmune disease, right? Because of this intense stress of the mold or mold toxins, it can create or trigger autoimmune disease. In terms of testing, there are a lot of different tests out there, uh, some better than others, some more controversial than others, but I'm just gonna go ahead and list some of them. You can do mold allergen testing. You do an IgG, and the IgG is more looking for sensitivity and reactivity to the mold. You can do allergen IgE, and you can do mold allergies that way. These two tests you can do through your regular lab. You can go to your hospital labs, you can go to LabCorp, Quest Labs. This one checks for 14 different ones, and this one checks for 12. And this is usually the out-of-pocket expense, right? If you, if you don't bill it through insurance and you wanna pay out-of-pocket, that's the cost of the two tests, okay? You can do a fungal nasal swab. So this is for people who have recurrent sinus infections, or they can do a sputum test where they can you know, cough up what's in your lungs and do a culture of that. So you can do a nasal swab or a, a sputum test when cultured. Um, you can do that usually through a pulmonologist or a ENT doctor or ear, nose, and throat. You can also do urinary microtoxins or mycotoxins. Now this one's a little bit more controversial because some people say it's not accurate. However, if you avoid foods that have high mold for a period of time, let's say four weeks, and then do the testing, it'll be more specific and accurate, right? So foods like grains, uh, dry fruits, nuts, even coffee, things that are stored for longer periods of time and have the probability or a possibility of developing mold, you want to avoid those types of foods. Okay? Now, the test is a little bit expensive, 300 to around 380. And there's two labs that typically will do it. One is called Great Plains Lab, and the other one is called Real Time Lab. Okay? So if you can go ahead and Google that and you want to research it, you can go ahead and do that. Now, you can also do a reactivity test through Cyrex Labs. They don't check as many, but it's pretty accurate. You can do, look up Cyrex array number 12, and this is a blood test, okay? Number five, you can look for chronic inflammatory response syndrome, or SIRS, okay? 
This is looking at multiple markers to determine if someone has an inflammatory response to mold, because mold is the most common uh, way to define if it's going to trigger SIRS or chronic inflammatory response. Now that was produced by Dr. Shoemaker, uh, who's well known within the mold community. These tests can be quite expensive and you have to go to a specialist who's going to run all these tests for you. Now, with that being said, some of those tests, or even like the, the visual contrast testing, is really not very specific for mold. It just says you have some visual changes. Or like some of the other testing can be positives for other conditions, not specifically for mold. But if you run a multiple of those tests, and, you can, uh, and multiple positives come out, then you can assume you might have SIRS, or chronic inflammatory response syndrome. Again, uh, you can go ahead and look up Dr. Shoemaker and look into some of the work that he does, okay? My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results, and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.